morning, everybody. Welcome to our Sunday morning worship service. We're glad all of you could join us. It's a beautiful, glorious day. We're in the presence of God and one another. What an awesome place to be this morning. And we welcome everybody on Facebook. Thank you for joining us remotely. And we know that you're part of our church family just as much as everybody that's here. So we're glad you could join us today. A couple of announcements. Yesterday was our food pantry. We fed 75 families. Yes, yes, yes. All oh, the food is gone, and the people are blessed. What, a, what an awesome time. So uh, the very last person, we had one bag left. I was leaving, and they were driving in, and there they go. They got the last bag. So that's the way God operates. So every single time, thank everyone who came and uh, served, to volunteered to help us set up, to serve, to uh, greet people with God's love, and those that donated financially. Always, we appreciate all your donations. And it's going to good use, believe me. And God is just being blessed and glorified through your work and through your generosity. We are in need of paper bags. So for those of you that do shop in places where bags are abundant, maybe you can ask for some extras or double bag it kind of thing. And uh, we could certainly use those paper bags because we'll have our upcoming uh, food pantry next month as well, as well as possibly people come to the church and need food. We need bags to put that all that good stuff in it. So... Paper bags, bring them here to the church. We appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, we're also going to have an exciting time on March the 13th. We have a new roof, as you well know, and we're still collecting uh, donations for that if you would like to contribute. However, we're also going to continue to make God's uh, temple a more beautiful place by painting it. So, yes, awesome, awesome. Thank you, thank you. It needs that. So we're beautifying God's uh, house. Uh, there's no reason that our house should look, should look better than God's house. So that's what we see in scripture, and we're going to do that March the 13th. If you would like to volunteer to help with that, Pastor Jamie, our in-house painter person, the painting uh, pastor. extraordinaire, the painting pastor, she's well known, is going to head up a uh, team for that. So please see her, and uh, we're going to just do more work by uh, showing God uh, how much we care about the property God has entrusted to us so that we can have worship and ministries here. That's what this building is for, so we can do work outside of the building. Uh, but thank you all for that. So I think that's all for the announcements. You ready to get your praise on and sing praises to God? Hear the word of God, hear some prayers and praises, and just feel better leaving here than when you came, right? Every time that you come here, you feel God's presence. Wherever you are, we know that God is going to touch and uh, restore you, heal you, and uplift you. That's what God is all about. So let us pray. God, we thank you for gathering us here this day. We pray for each and every person that's here with us, those that are watching or listening, God. We know that each and every one of us are precious in your sight, and we thank you for that, God. I ask the anointing of your Holy Spirit upon this service so that everything that is said or done, God, is through your voice and through your wisdom and through your guidance. Speak to us, God, and lift us up and use us, God, to proclaim your beautiful love for everyone. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're going to get started with a toe tapper this morning. A hand clapper, a toe tapper, a tambourine shaker, a heel hopper, a Jesus praise and song, a heel hopper. Get ready, here we go. I can see the clouds rolling.
solid rock I stand all of the ground in sinking sand So stomp your feet and clap your hands I beat her on the bottom. Oh, clap your hands! On Christ the solid rock I stand all of the ground in sinking sand So stomp your feet and clap your hands I beat her on the rock On Christ the solid rock I stand all of the ground in sinking sand So stomp your feet and clap your hands I beat her on the rock And I feel my heart set us free and we're free indeed. indeed yes we are our offering scripture this morning comes from Psalm 54 verse 6 
I will sacrifice and give a voluntary offering to you. I will praise your name, God, for you are good. You rescue me from all my troubles and help me triumph over everything. So as we give today, we're giving God a, a free will offering. It's something we give out of the love of our hearts. And as we give the offering this morning, we're giving so that others too can find who God is and know who God is in their life as well. So we continue all of our ministries through the generous gifts and offerings that you give to our church. If you're watching and you would like to use the church's website, you can see a donate page. You can use the secure giving there. Also PayPal, or you can certainly send a check or use the mobile app for Christ the Cornerstone Church that you'll find on Ministry One. Whatever you give, know that you're sowing seed into God's kingdom so God can continue to add, add more and more people and set more and more people and get people out of their graves once and for all. Let us pray. God, we thank you for the mighty sacrifice that you gave us. You gave us your entire life so we could live, we could be free. We could be people, God, that you could use in any number of ways, Lord. We, you're, you're so good to us. You've helped us triumph over so many things. And as we give you these offerings this day, we know we're putting that into your hands so that you can continue your ministry of reaching more and more people for your kingdom and bringing them all into a place of freedom and eternal life. And we thank you for the awesome ministry of this beautiful church. In Jesus' name, amen.
such a powerful morning. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm overwhelmed by the presence of God this morning. I, uh, <laughs> I just woke up with kind of a, an extra pep in my step this morning, and I think I was being prepared for the joy of seeing so many people here today, <laughs> and overwhelmed by yesterday's just outpouring of love to people, and, and this reading through this book today, I, <laughs> I didn't get the, the honor of walking around and, and writing the prayers and the praises down in the book. Pastor Joyce did it for me this morning, and, and I was over here reading it to prepare, and it just praise after praise after praise, and hope after hope after hope. Prayer is us putting our hope and faith in God in action. Because there's nothing we can do with this stuff. I mean, we've got cancer that's been healed. We've got COVID that has ran through houses that has been healed. We have financial concerns that have been resolved. I know some of you may still have some prayers out there that are in line with these. And some days, man, it just seems like it's not going to get better. Pray. There's a lot of things. We can't do anything ourselves when our friends, our family, our loved ones come down with cancer or an illness or going through financial stress. But we can pray. That is our faith and our hope and action. That is our acknowledgement of God within our lives and the acknowledgement that God is the ultimate physician. He's the ultimate accountant. He's the <laughs> ultimate villain, whatever the blank is. There's a lot of times we feel hopeless because there's not something that we can do about a situation within our lives or within somebody else's life. You can't physically pay a friend's bill sometimes, right? You can't physically come in and just take an illness out of somebody. But God can. Amen. And when you feel powerless, remember that God is the ultimate power. And that's where prayer is so important. And there's a lot of prayers answered in this book, and I know there's a lot of prayers out there waiting for answers i as i read through this feel i hope <laughs> that hope comes down if you're struggling because prayers are getting answered out there prayers are getting answered patient and just keep praying I, I just that is my hope to you and that is where i am so overwhelmed that just stick with it that is an action item some people are like oh praying okay yeah so i say some words it, it's so much more than that that is your hope and faith in action. That is something that you can do for people. So let us go into prayer think, thinking about that. When you are, feel powerless, God is the ultimate power. So let's put our hope and faith in action right now and bow our heads. We'll start with some silence to allow just God's presence to fall upon you and you to have some prayer time with God right now. Lord, we come to you now, God, putting our faith in you, God, putting our hope in you, Lord. God, we pray for Becky, who has vertigo, Lord. Help her to be healed, Lord, and, and, and be there for Pastor Joyce that she care takes for her, God. Prayers for Joe, Matt's dad, who is in ICU on oxygen with internal bleeding due to COVID. God, we also pray for Jadine, their son Michael, who, are also, who also have COVID, Lord. Just please come down upon that household, Lord. Prayers for Susan's brother, Chris, who has cancer, and for her son, Greg, who is having health issues. God, we put these people in your, in your hands, God. Prayers of healing for Sarah. Prayers for Trisha's niece, Tina, who has diagno been diagnosed with breast cancer, and her husband, Mike, who has liver cancer, but is doing well with treatments. Prayers for Johnny's co-worker, Don, who had a TIA. Prayers that Ross receives the care he needs in rehab so that he can fully heal and return home. God, we pray for all these people, Lord, and, and those th others that are on our heart, God. Lord, we turn to you now with praises. God, we praise you that Susan is healed and she and Marianne have made it through their journey together, God. What a journey that was, God. We, we praise you for that, Lord. And thank you so much that we get physical eyes on them this morning here, God. Praises that Ellie's Aunt Eva can walk. 
God, this one is overwhelming. We've been praying for Aunt Eva for about a year now. God, thank you, Lord. Thank you for healing her, God, and allowing her to walk. Praises that God brought Bill and Jim back to church, Lord. What a blessing they are, God. Thank you for that, Lord. Lord. And uh, just thank you for that, Lord. That's overwhelming. Praises that Paul's son-in-law and grandson, who are are now COVID-free, God, and that you protected the rest of the household, God. Praises that Amber's mom, Sandy, is COVID negative and has fully recovered. God, we praise you, God. We, we see, you know, half of this book this morning was prayers and half of it was praises, God. Allow us, if we are in a dark place or a hopeless place, God, to allow those praises to lift us up and know that you are in the midst of the other prayers, God, and that you are working in your time, God, and that's so difficult for us, Lord. Help us to have patience and just keep our hope and faith in you, Lord. We lift these prayers up to you, God. We acknowledge you are all-powerful, mighty, and wonderful, God. In your precious name we pray, amen. There's no place I would rather be there's no place I would rather be. There's no place I would rather be than here in your love, here in your love. There's no place I would rather be. There's no place I would rather be. There's no place I would rather be than here in your love, here in your love. Oh, 
There's no place I would rather be. No place. No place I would rather be. No There's no place I would rather be than hearing your love. Hearing your love. Amen. So trying to compete with God is a tough one, isn't it, sometimes, isn't it? When you're in God's presence and you feel God's love, you want more and more of it, don't you? And all of us need more of God and less of us. Less of us. More of you, God, less of me. Wouldn't that be awesome if all of us could be more like Jesus Christ, more like God, and less like ourselves sometimes, that human self of us? You know, the split personality that we have? Well, maybe I have. Okay, you don't have it, but I do possibly, right? Well, you're part human and part like God, and some days you do better than others, right? And so that's why we need to continue to be in God's presence all the time and be able to understand and hear and know the word of God, the voice of God, the guidance of God, so that we know that we can make the right decisions, make the right kind of uh, actions that we take, as well as... Back to words, I have to say it. What we say to one another. What we say to one another is so important. So we're going to go into the book of Proverbs this morning. Just happens to be chapter 17 is just replete with some good words of wisdom as it relates to how to have better relationships with one another. Because I don't know about you, I have a great relationship with God. And God has a great relationship with me. Sometimes... The relationships I have with others, if I'm not acting godly, it's not such a good relationship, is it? And I guess maybe, just maybe, if it's true for me, it's also true for you, right? Sometimes we would like to be more like God, wouldn't we? We'd like to say and do and think more like God, more loving, more kind, more generous, more compassionate, more empathic, more... Just more of God, more loving, which is unconditional love. Wouldn't we all want to do that? Wouldn't you like to be treated by people that are, act like God? Yes, we want that. And wouldn't it be great if we were the people treating other people like God? Wow, we'd have like an awesome church, wouldn't we? Oh, yeah, we already do. But we're going to continue to focus on that, learn about that, and put the words of God through, through the power of wisdom, godly wisdom, into all of our lives. Because I don't know about you, anybody here ever have a conflict with somebody else by chance? A disagreement? A misunderstanding? Anybody here that's always right besides me? And the other person is usually wrong? And sometimes there's this dissertation back and forth proving to one another how, because both of us many times think we're right, right? We're always right. All of us are right, aren't we? Except for when we're wrong. But needless to say, <laughs> needless to say, many times, I, I call it what, having a, like a verbal tug of war. Anybody play tug of war as a kid? Am I too old? Is that what happened? I'm showing my age here. Tug of war, where essentially, you, you know, you get a t two teams together, right? And you get a big rope, and you got something in the middle, and there's a line between it, and you're trying to pull the all other person over to your side, right? And you're using all your strength and all your might, and the other person's pulling which direction? The opposite direction. So they're pulling one way, and you're pulling another. And, bef and, what, and the object of the game is to do what? Pull them over to your side and make them fall down and you win. It's all about winning, of course, right? You've got to be stronger. You've got to be more powerful. You've got to have, in fact, when you pick your teams, you make sure you've got somebody with some good muscles. If you're going to do a tug of war with somebody, you want to make sure you kind of stack the deck on your side, right? So you make sure you pull them over. Well, that's all fine and game, for fun and games when it's a childish game. But when you become an adult person, we don't need to be in tug of war with one another, do we? God is not the God of tug and war, who's right, who's wrong, who's good, who's bad, all those kinds of things. God wants people where? 
on God's side, right? Come on over to our side. Come on over into the kingdom of God. Everybody's welcome. And so the key is when we have sometimes what I call verbal tug of war, where two people are going back and forth and just tugging, pulling, trying to pull them this way, and they're pulling that way, and you're pulling this way, and, you're, and it's just, I mean, I don't know about you, but that's like wasted energy, is it not? And it's not always a good feeling, is it? How do you feel when you've been tugging and pulling and you, then maybe they pull you over and you fall down? It's a negative feeling, is it not? And even if you win by knocking somebody else down, is that really winning? Of course not, right? So the Bible is teaching us today that one of the things I want to teach you, if you have any kind of conflict with someone else and a disagreement and you're trying to get them over to your side for whatever reason you are, one of the things I want you to do is for you to drop the rope. Drop the rope, meaning this. If somebody's pulling in another direction, instead of you pulling back in the opposite direction, you just let go. You just drop it. Instead of having to be right, instead of having to coerce somebody into your way of thinking. And instead of trying to force somebody to believe what you believe, you don't win over people by doing things that are obstinate and against them and pulling against them, do you? So we're going to drop the rope. So, you know, sometimes even when you're right, you can cause a person to understand your point of view if you'll also be willing to understand their point of view as well when you listen to them, when you care more about understanding a person than you do in being right and having your way and winning the argument. Anybody here besides me persistent? Uh, some people might call it stubborn, determined, and win at all costs. And if you grew up in a family like I did with obstinate, both parents obstinate towards each other and adversarial back and forth, back and forth, it was a tennis match that wasn't very pleasant to watch when one person was against the other and back and forth. And it's just hard to watch things like that, isn't, isn't it? Arguing like that just to, for the sake of it. My, my family, I would probably call them the Bickersons, even though they were the Stones or the Bickersons. Because they could bicker, they could stay up for hours on end, talking about you know whatever it was. That the next day you thought, what was that they started about anyway? Hmm. So back to the Bible. So I want to help us have better relationships. I guess is what I'm saying, and I want us to realize that silence is okay when someone else maybe doesn't agree with you or doesn't understand you, it's okay for you not to have to force your opinion upon them. That would be okay. And we watch Jesus throughout his ministry, even though he was challenged and people didn't believe in him, what he would do was love them anyway, right? He would feed them anyway. He would heal them anyway. And then through showing his love to them and his compassion towards them, that would attract people to him. We want to pull people towards us when we're Christians, right? Because we want to be more like God. God is a God of reconciliation, bringing people together, bringing people together back with God and having one accord. And it's okay to agree to disagree if necessary. That would be okay. But some fights that we get into aren't really very helpful. They're not good at all, to say it the least. So back to Proverbs. I'm going to get there. Chapter 17. Chapter 17, verse 9 says this. Disregarding another person's faults preserves love. So disregarding. Anybody here ever notice anybody who has any faults? Has anybody been so kind to you that they overlooked your faults and loved you anyway? Don't you love people like that? <laughs> Aren't you glad that the scriptures tell us that when we overlook someone else's faults, meaning we stop, we disregard them, that's not what we put our attention on. We don't speak about that to them. Disregarding them preserves love. Verse 14 says this, beginning a quarrel is like opening a floodgate. 
Don't you love it when somebody comes up to you and says, I got, I got something I got to tell you. Can I see you? And you go, oh, I've been called to the principal's office. <laughs> now, if someone comes to us to give us feedback in love, is that okay? Of course. People are trying to help us grow and change, and it's, uh, there's ways to do those kinds of things, right? But at the same time, if we're coming at it from a, I gotta, t I gotta tell you something, this is what you just did, and whoever that might even be, our children, our parents, our siblings, our spouses, you know, there's nothing worse than walking into the kitchen and hearing, I had to clean up that mess. Uh, uh, what mess? The mess you left last night? Makes you feel good inside, doesn't it? But what if that same person cleaned up the mess and didn't say anything to you about it? Different feeling, right? We can have better relationships with people if we're willing to drop it. Drop it. We don't have to tell everybody everything we're thinking about them, particularly if it's something of a negative nature. Right? Okay, good. Verse 27. A truly wise person uses few words. I better, I better work on that one. <laughs> A person with understanding is even-tempered. Even-tempered. And verse 28. Even fools are thought to be wise when they keep silent. When they keep their mouths shut, they seem intelligent. So there's something to be said, or not said, about us picking our battles. When, when and if we want to speak to other people, we have to also keep in mind, is this something the Holy Spirit would have me say? And is this going to keep this person in good stead? And we can just disregard the piece of paper that's flowing away. Or you can pay attention to the word of God. <laughs> and I can be silent for a little while too. Oh, anyway, so point is this. Some of the worst arguments you never have are the best arguments. Some of the words you never say to somebody are the best words you'll never say. When you want to keep a relationship intact, and if somebody has something against you, and you have to hear them out, it's okay not to get defensive, too. If somebody gives you honest feedback and is really doing it in a loving, caring way to try to help you improve, it's okay not to do a tug of war and explain to them why you did what you did and all those sorts of things. Because here's the thing I know about God. God already knows everything we've ever done wrong, correct? God also sees every little thing we do, correct? And God also forgives us and disregards about 99% of the things that we do that are not okay. Because that's the kind of God we have who loves us. Now, God is also going to try to steer us in the right direction through guidance and direction and gentleness and kindness. And he's going to be someone who's going to help us Feel as though, yes, I know I've done the wrong thing, but he's not going to beat us up about it. And so if God doesn't beat us up and harm us and, and cause us to be punished for the things we've done wrong, what possible right do we have to do that to somebody else? None. And therefore, therefore, when we decide that we're going to be more godly, there's going to be a lot of things that you're going to have to overlook that other people do that step on your toes or bother you. You're just going to have to overlook people's idiosyncrasies and little quirks that they have and some of their imperfections. Because what do you want in return? Them to look over yours, right? <laughs> and so as we're continuing to grow to be more and more like Christ, I'd like you, each time that you feel that urge, that you just, you know, you just got to get into it with them. 
You just got to be right one more time and you got to win that tug of war battle. I pray that you will simply drop the matter. Just drop it. Let it go. You ever heard the saying that don't sweat the small stuff? Do you know that it's all small stuff? <laughs> the things that we really get ourselves irritated about sometimes, particularly the slow guy in front of you at the red light who doesn't know where the accelerator is. And, you know, short of having a megaphone on the front of your hood that the person you, if you had a microphone in your car and it could come out the front grill and say, move! <laughs> oh, that's called a horn, right? <laughs> right? I don't know about you, but, you know, if I'm stopped at a red light and, you know, I get a text or whatever and it's something important and I'm looking down at it, you know, and I'm like, into, 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 I know the light's red and I'm paying kind of attention, but I'm looking at something important right here, right now, right? And the horn blows, my heart just like, boom. And then, you know, your foot goes on the gas and you hit the guy in front of you because you just like respond so quickly. And then who am I yelling at? The person that texted me. If they didn't text me, I wouldn't have to look at this text, and I wouldn't, no. Anyway, see, so the key is, the key is, we have to be even-tempered. I don't know about you, but I grew up with a hot-tempered person. There are more holes in my house, not to renovations, but through fists. That was a violent, toxic family dynamic that I grew up in. And if I'm not careful... I have that gene within me because I'm a, sometimes I get a little upset. I get a lot upset. I get really upset. That's the human part, right? The Bible says get angry but don't sin. So listen. Even though we come from those kind of places, we don't have to be that kind of person now, do we? We can all change and grow to be more like who Jesus Christ is, can't we? We have to constantly have a strong relationship, strong enough relationship with God that we become more and more and more like him and less and less and less like who we were. And by doing that, the things that used to upset us, the things that used to bother us, the things that irritate us, no longer do. But you have to be willing, first and foremost, to begin to practice dropping it. Dropping the tug of war rope with others. Even and especially when you're right and you know it. And they should know it too. And as soon as I can convince them 22 hours later, everything will be great. Here's the thing. You can be right, but you can also be very alone. I don't know about you, but I would rather have people in my life than out of my life because of the way I speak to them or treat them. Right? So we have to control us. Self-control is one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Galatians 6. Go back and read it. Self-control. So the next time, and I may be, maybe I'm just talking to myself this morning. I don't really know. But probably I am. But needless to say, for those of you that may have this similar kind of thing going on, the next time you find that you're in this back and forth with someone, you start to realize, wait a minute, I need to stop talking, start listening, and drop the rope. Get on their side. Understand where they're coming from. See what they need. Especially, perhaps, if they don't have what we have in terms of the power of the Holy Spirit. Be more loving, be more kind, be more compassionate. And it's pretty hard to argue with only one person. Am I correct? And I know some of you argue with yourselves because I have that same voices in my head. 
going on back and forth. And I have to tell them, uh, go settle down and call on God. Call on God to give you the words to speak. Jesus had great and awesome wisdom. He knew when to speak, when not to speak. He knew when to come back and give direction. He knew the right questions to ask. But he always came at people from a point of wanting to understand them and to love them. He cared more about being in a relationship with them. Why do you think he kept saying, come follow me? He wanted people drawn to him. So to be adversarial towards them would do him absolutely no good, would it? That would push people away. So if you want stronger, better, more loving relationships, spend more time with God, first and foremost. Look at the word of God. Silence can be golden. And if somebody else wants to start a dissertation or disagreement with you, just drop the rope and have a time of peace and quiet and just listen to what they have to say. And then peace will happen, won't it? Peace will happen. Another gift of the Holy Spirit. So this morning, I don't know what you got going on. I know we want more of God. We want more love and we want more to be more loving, don't we? So don't sweat the small stuff. And remember, it's all small stuff. And if it's big stuff, you give it to God and let God handle it for you. And I do have to tell you the truth. Sometimes we're wrong. I had to say it. And sometimes you can learn a lot more from listening to another person's point of view than only expounding on your own. You never really learn by talking as much as you do by listening to someone, especially when they're speaking words of wisdom, like I am this morning. <laughs> so the next time you have something that you have to certainly tell somebody about, pray about it first, ask God to guide you through it, come at it from a loving perspective, and do it so that the outcome is that you maintain the relationship. That's the most important thing you have with another human being, is a positive, loving relationship. So do it so that it's a win-win, where both of you feel better at the end of the conversation than one of you feeling like you've been victorious and the other person is, loses something. We want to be in win-win relationships, don't we? So guess what would happen if both people decided to put down the rope? Those are the best, awesome, most wonderful relationships. So those of us that are in relationship with anybody else, anybody know anybody? Oh, I see people that know. Oh, yeah. So we're all in relationship with one another, including people on Facebook. And boy, oh, boy. Please disregard some of the things that you see as posts on Facebook. Disregard it. You don't have to answer back to them and prove why you're right. How about you just scroll down and just put something out there that's good and positive and loving. And maybe, just maybe, people might find some good in that instead. So we want to be truth tellers. That God loves us all, but we not only want to tell it, we want to show it by our words and by our silence. So if you want to pick a fight with me, today would be the day to do it. Because I'm going to put down the rope. You're going to fight all by yourself. Have at it. <laughs> How about we give a virtual hug instead? Amen? Amen. Let us pray. God, we thank you that you're the God of reconciliation. You're the God who wants people to love each other, to be together with one another, even though we're different, God. Help us see the good in one another. Help us only speak good things to each other, God. And help us continue to disregard those things in others, God. 
that so very often are our own mirror, Lord, that we know are in ourselves. Help us, God, to love the way you do. Help us to show who you are more and more by what we say, by what we don't say, and by God, when someone is having difficulty with us, Lord, help us seek to understand them more than we seek to be understood. Let us be more like you, Lord, so we can have more peace in our lives and bring more peace into the lives of others. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So now that you drop it, you get to go home today. We'll give you a virtual hug. We'll see you tonight at 7 o'clock. An awesome song and a prayer will be there at 7. One of my all-time favorites, so join us at 7. God bless you. We love you all. Amen. Amen.